ASP is back again with more Marine Corps equipment, uniforms, and belongings. So, Joe, what do we have here? All right, these are the shelter halves, or half a tent, mm -hmm. meaning two guys put their shelter half together, one tent. Each man carried a wool blanket mm -hmm. with, rolled within his shelter half. Now, by the height of the war, especially in Central Solomons, as warm as it was, I don't think they were putting their blankets inside their shelter halves. It was just so hot. Mm -hmm. And rolling your wool blanket into the shelter half made it heavier, a lot heavier. Uh, my good friend Bob was a sergeant in the Marines during the Korean War, and he said they were issued two wool blankets to roll within their shelter half. Mm -hmm. Now that makes sense, obviously, right? Yeah. But think of how big and heavy it would have been. Um, you could tell a Marine Corps blanket by two things. One, these green, dark green stripes through it. Okay? Okay. And then, right in the middle, block lettered USMC. Now, not all of them have the USMC in it. By 1943, 44, 45, the height of the war, you know, they were cutting corners. So not all Marine blankets would you find that mark in them. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is the wool blanket. And you would fold this up pretty much into like a, uh, don't hold me to it, a three foot square. Mm -hmm. And then this went inside the shelter half, and then you rolled the two of them up together. Okay. And within, uh, we'll talk about that later. All right, and this is the blanket. It's wool, it's thick, it's warm as all hell. Yeah. Which is why I can't believe a lot of the guys would have been rolling them into their shelter half if they prepared to embark on an island. Okay, and that will show the early contract shelter halves. They were just mustard khaki color. Uh, most of them were manufactured by the depot themselves, so there's no there's no markings on them. Uh, as the war started, they did contract even the khaki ones out to the Powers Company, and they did make some of them. Here's what's left of a contract tag. Unfortunately, it's ripped. That's usually what happens to them. It's just a thin piece of cotton tag. We can see it actually, you make out shelter half. See it? Yeah. Right about there. So the fact that this one has a tag in it, it probably wasn't manufactured at the depot. This is probably one of the ones made by Powers, but I'm just assuming that. But you can see how flimsy the cotton tag was. It's hard yeah. to find shelter half with tags in them. All right, and again, it was a two-man tent. It was a pup tent is what it was. Mm -hmm. And you, you would fold up the blanket to a square, it would fit in here, and then you roll the whole thing up, and it would look like this. See the blanket sticking out of it? Yeah. And that was it. Okay. It was the same thing on both sides. And then by 1943, they got into using the camouflage. The shelter halves were also becoming camouflaged as well. Now, all the camouflage shelter halves are A, reversible. Mm -hmm. That hadn't changed. And B, they were all made by the Powers Company. Okay. And you can see this one still has a contract tag in it, 1943. See it? Shelter half, Powers Company. There you go, the contract number, 1943. Now, I have several of these shelter halves, and this is the only one with a visible contract tag still in them. Mm -hmm. They're hard to find with the tags in them. Same basic design. You see they have what was called sunburst buttons. that the two halves buttoned together across the top. Mm -hmm. And there was no left and right with either version. Whoever you buddied up with, it would work. You could put them together. Yeah. You know, because that would have been a real issue. You know what I mean? So that wasn't a problem. And a cool thing about this is if you look at the main body of it, and then you look at the two wings of it, yeah. it's two different shades. Yeah. Two like, different Yeah, like I had said in shades. an earlier video with the 41 uh, herringbone uniform, when they ran out of material, you got the next roll and you just kept sewing. So if the pattern was just a little different, a little shaded, it didn't matter. You just kept sewing along, you know? Mm -hmm. And here we can see the, the brown side under it, the beach side camo. And then of course there were accessories involved with all of this. What are the accessories? Well, you had these straps for strapping them together around your pack or yeah. just to carry over your shoulder. And obviously the early ones had khaki ones and then the, the later ones came with camouflage ones. Mm -hmm. And every Marine within his shelter half, he had one pole 
five pins, one piece of rope. Okay. And that's all you needed. Two guys with those pieces to put a tent up. Um, early in the war, you see this one here is dated 41. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how it works. It was a folding pole, three pieces. And then these brass keeps were kept it locked in place. You stuck in the ground. And then the tip of the tent went over here. Okay. Okay. Shortly after the war started, these are no longer brass. Is there a reason why? Oh, sure. We had to make bullets out of brass. Brass was a commodity. So they became galvanized. See, I believe this one's dated 45. Hold on, let me see. Oop. There it is. 1945, yeah. I've even seen them dated 1942, and the brass is already gone from the folding poles. It's already galvanized. Okay. Nothing changed other than that. These became galvanized instead of brass. And you would take your three pieces. Basically what you do is take your three, your three sets of pieces, put them in here, with the blanket and all, of course, and then you would roll it up as such. Okay. Like that. A short version, but that's pretty much how it, how it went. So everything was, was internal. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't need to put those in your bag. They got rolled up in the shelter half and blanket. And that's the uh, Marine Corps shelter halves. All right. Let's go off onto the next Marine Corps equipment, uniform, uniforms and belongings. Stay tuned.